Welcome everyone to True Crime and Sims. We're going to talk about a historic true crime case while playing Sims. I chose to do Sims 3 instead of Sims 4 because I, I don't know, I thought it'd be a little bit ironic to do the older game while we're talking about historic crime. Though I do own Sims 4, I might do a few playthroughs of Sims 4 with maybe some more modern cases in the future. Today we're going to talk about Elizabeth Bathory. I thought we would start with something iconic, and everyone kind of knows about that case. So let's get started talking about Elizabeth and why some people think she's innocent. So this is the first time I've played Sims in a little while. I got a little bit confused in Build a Sim when I was making my girl character. I couldn't quite remember where all the features were. It took me a second to figure that out. You might see me kind of hesitate there for a bit. Um, the guy I tried to keep pretty much the same. I was trying to get through this fairly quickly, though I kind of forgot that when I was making the girl character. I spent probably a little bit too long making her, but it all worked out in the end. <laughs> Elizabeth Bathory was born into the very, very prominent and wealthy aristocratic Bathory family. Both of her parents were members of the Bathory family. I tried to figure out if they were closely related or distant relatives. I couldn't quite figure that out. The family tree was a bit confusing. But as best I could tell, they were kind of distant relatives from two separate branches of the Bathory family. Though some people have speculated that her crimes may have been caused by the inbreeding, that maybe that sort of had an effect on her mind that caused her to commit the crimes that she is so well known for. Her aristocratic parents were well known and well connected. and. Many people in her family had prominent roles in Hungary and maybe some other European countries. I believe she had one relative who was a high-ranking official that worked as kind of a liaison between Hungary and other countries. As a child, she is known to have suffered from seizures. Some people speculate that she had epilepsy and that that might have had an effect on her mind that maybe the epilepsy combined with the inbreeding could be a reason why she was a, well, murderer. So Elizabeth was well-educated. She spoke about four languages, and she was raised as a Protestant. At the age of 10, she became engaged. Her husband was from a less prominent family, and she absolutely refused to take her husband's name when they got married. So her husband decided to take the Bathory name. Okay, I don't know how this happened, but part of my gameplay got deleted. I changed the last name from Kent to Sanford, and I changed the female character's name from Miranda to Clara. And now we can get back to the story of Elizabeth and her opulent wedding. About 4,500 people were invited to their wedding. It was a large wedding. After the wedding, her husband gave her ownership of his castle. We have this idea that historically women weren't allowed to own property, but that actually depends on what part of history you're talking about. It was actually not uncommon for women to own property in certain historic time periods, and obviously this must be one of them. Her husband was a high-ranking member of the Hungarian military, and he spent a lot of time away from home. When he was away, she was put in charge of managing his household. One time when he was away from home, Elizabeth was put in charge of defending their household from an invading army. I believe it was from the Ottoman Empire. I believe that was the major threat they were facing at that time. But Elizabeth proved herself to be capable of protecting her house and managing her household. Elizabeth gave birth to four children before her husband died of a mysterious illness when he was 48. Before his death, he asked his friend, as best I can pronounce, Gijori 
Thurzo to look after his wife. Maybe it's Georgie? I'm just going to call him George because that's the English version of his name. Here in build mode you can see that it's been a while since I've played this game because I just put in two sinks and no toilet. And I didn't even realize it for like a hot second. So I'll get it together. Anyway, back to Elizabeth. As I'm sure most people are aware, Elizabeth started targeting young women. She's famous for having bathed in the blood of her victims. However, it's not known if she actually did that. Contemporary accounts don't back up that information. The mention of these baths don't appear until about 100 years after Elizabeth's death. Unfortunately, Elizabeth's victims were surprisingly young, age 10 to 14. She started a training school for girls. Many of her victims were among her students. She is also said to have abducted other victims from nearby villages. The victims were subjected to incredibly terrible, torturous treatment. There are also rumors that she may have been engaged in cannibalism. Rumors of her torture began to spread around Hungary, shortly before her husband's death. In 1610, six years after her husband's death, the king appointed George to look into the allegations against Elizabeth. Despite George's promise to look after Elizabeth, he seemed to have no interest in holding back with his investigation. In a single year, over 300 people came forward to testify against Elizabeth. In modern times, some doubt has been thrown on George's investigation. Many of those who testified against Elizabeth were indebted to George or worked for him in some way. It was well known that Elizabeth and her husband were overly harsh with their servants. But a lot of the allegations against Elizabeth were based on rumor and hearsay. George would arrest Elizabeth and four of her servants. Rumor has long stated that George caught Elizabeth red-handed, but many of these accounts are widely believed to be exaggerated. Elizabeth was sentenced to house arrest. While Elizabeth was serving out her house arrest, her servants had already been executed for their part in her crimes. Elizabeth's status as a noblewoman saved her from the same fate. Ironically, the servants probably had little choice in helping her. They would have been duty-bound to do whatever she said. In the month before her death, she oversaw the distribution of all her earthly goods to her children. In late August 1614, Elizabeth complained she was cold to her bodyguard. The bodyguard replied by telling her to lie down. Elizabeth would never wake up again. It's become a popular theory that Elizabeth may have helped inspire the character of Dracula in the famous Bram Stoker novel. However, it's unknown whether or not the author drew inspiration from Elizabeth Bathory and the legends that surround her bloody crimes. So there are a lot of theories as to why Elizabeth may have turned to murder. One of the more interesting theories is that it had to do with her epilepsy. Supposedly, when she was young, it was common to take the blood of a non of a non epileptic person and rub it on the lips of the person who had epilepsy. This was rumored to be a cure. Some suggest that Elizabeth may have liked this treatment a little bit too much and turned to murder and cannibalism to satisfy some kind of urge she had from childhood onward. Elizabeth was believed to have killed around 600 women. It may have been more, it may have been less, and perhaps the charges against her were nothing but smoke. But personally, I believe that there was probably at least a little bit of truth to the claims that the bloody countess enjoyed hurting young girls. What do you think? Was Elizabeth a bloodthirsty monster or a misunderstood historical figure? Do you think there's a possibility that she was framed by George? Or do you think she was guilty as charged? Let me know in the comment section below. I didn't know where to put this in the video, so I thought I'd just tack this along here at the end. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about my goals for my Sim characters. Kyle's main goal is to be a father of multiple children. I put some numbers in a random number generator and it gave me 11. So my goal is to have at least 11 kids, so I might bump that up to 12 just so we can have a dozen. 
Clara's goal is to open her own bakery. Right now she's working at a restaurant, saving up money and honing her cooking skills, but eventually we will build her her own little establishment and we'll probably use a random number generator to find out how much revenue she can generate from week to week. Anyway, those will be our long-term goals in this playthrough. Please like, subscribe, and share the video. Patreon details will be linked down below once I get it set up. And please come back next time to hear another historic crime case and watch some Sims magic.